a distended abdomen and a lump with visible peristalsis along with exaggerated bowel sounds. All this tale tells a story pointing towards a clinical diagnosis of acute intestinal obstruction where the cause of it was not all. The patient was intubated in the emergency department because of the poor GCS of E2, V2, M4 and eventually the patient turned out to be COVID positive on rapid test. The patient was given normal cell and bolus 30 ml per kg given the in view of shock with the continuation of intravenous maintenance fluid of 100 ml per hour. Following the IV fluid bolus, the patient responded to the IV fluid resuscitation and the BP had gone up to 100 by 70 ml per kg. At the plain X-ray of abdomen that they had was showing a multiple air fluid levels suggesting an obstruction which you can see, see here few multiple air fluid levels are seen. The laboratory restrictions were sent and the findings revealed a leukocytosis apart from it the creatinine was raised to 1.7 mg per deciliter and the hypovolemia was observed. The rest of the blood parameters were unremarkable. So although we made a clinical diagnosis of acute intestinal obstruction but the lump on examination remained a question that was unanswered yet. So we went ahead with a contrast and a CT scan of the abdomen which showed features of small bowel obstruction with bowel loops clumped in the left hypochondriac and left lumbar region and features of ischemia in a segment of small bowel of the cocoon. So you can see here the cocoon has formed and the below image you can see the, the thin, thick membrane surrounding the dilated bowel loops here. At this point, we could figure out the diagnosis of acute small bowel obstruction secondary to Cox abdomen. And keeping in mind the ischemia of the bowel, we took him up for emergency surgery. And the plan was exploratory laparotomy. So, interoperatively, what we have found that the bowel loops were clumped and encased like a cocoon with dense additions. The bowel loops are gradually delineated by additional lysis. Upon dissecting and accessing the sac, surprisingly, the bowel loops are found dilated and herniating through a 3 cross 3 cm defect in the messenger of the ileum, which you can see here, the defect over here. And the herniated bowel loops also showed a gangrenous changes. That overlying bowel loop over here are gangrenous changes, they are showing gangrenous changes. There are no other mesenteric defect we could found and there were no other mesenteric lymphadenopathy that were evident during the interop period. So we proceeded with resection of 60 cm of gangrenous small bowel, 10 cm proximal to the ileocecal junction and a double barrel ileostomy was made. Peritoneal leverage was given and two drains were put and facial closure with skin and subcranous tissue were closed. And the final diagnosis of acute intestinal obstruction, secondary to a transmesenteric internal hernia, was made. So, the post operatively, patient was kept on ventilator because of the COVID pneumonia. And looking at the bowel gangrene and also looking at the lung condition, he was put on injection meropenem. Thomas started functioning on the PUD3. He was started on nasogastric tube feeding on PUD3. And the antibiotics was continued. But the, but the abdominal drains were removed. A tracheostomy was done on PUD4 because of the requirement of prolonged ventilatory support. However, he started to develop fever on PUD6 for which cultures were sent and unfortunately endotracheal secretion culture grew a pseudomonas aeruginosa that was sensitive to cholestine and tyrannothopium sulfamethoxone. Accordingly, he was immediately started injection cholestine and as well as nebulizing cholestine along with tablet trimethoprom sulfamethoxazole via RT, which was continued till PUD10. And because of the tremendous effort by the COVID ICU team, patient was out of ventilator support from PUD10. Following this, the next day, tracheostomy was caught for 24 hours and patient was maintaining saturation in room air and removed, the tracheostomy was removed following day on PUD12. Following which, the period of hospital was uneventful and the patient was discharged on a satisfactory condition on PUD7. So at this point, what we have realized that because of the subacute presentation, 
with the diagnosis of Cox abdomen. He was managed non-operatively at primary center where he presented initially. As a surgeon, our primary tendency in a tuberculous abdomen in a subacute presentation is to give a conservative trial first and failure of which we go for a operative management. Although internal hernia is a rare entity, but it should be in our list of differentials when such a patient comes to us with no history suggestive of tuberculosis because contrary to Cox abdomen in a case of internal hernia, we should provide prompt operative management to prevent the strangulation and intestinal gangrene. And we are thankful that we could successfully manage this patient and could achieve a wonderful result and because of the multidisciplinary effort by the various departments of our college. So the dilemma of the case and abdominal cocoon. So what is an abdominal cocoon? So abdominal cocoon is a fibrocollagenous membrane encapsulating the small intestine and it forms because of a chronic inflammation as so such a internal hernia because of the chronic standing internal hernia that also can form a cocoon inside. But this is most commonly found in tuberculosis of the abdomen. Other than that, there are few rare causes of abdominal cocoon formation such as previous abdominal surgeries, peritoneal dialysis and it could be idiopathic also. So what is an internal hernia? So internal hernia is one of the rare causes of intestinal obstruction. The diagnosis of internal hernia is made relatively late and is most cases diagnosed during laparotomy itself as in our case. The delay in the diagnosis usually leads to bowel ischemia. So a patient with an internal hernia may be asymptomatic or may present with small bowel obstruction. But there are no signs specific to internal hernia and no imaging findings are conclusive of internal hernia. A high clinical suspicion should be made if a young patient presents with intestinal obstruction with abdominal cocoon without a prior history of abdominal surgery or pulmonary tuberculosis as in our case. CT is a sensitive and specific modality to diagnose intestinal obstruction and internal hernia but there are no CT criteria for internal hernia at present. Even with an advanced modality like CT, the herniation of bowel loops could not be delineated. The herniation of the intestinal loops leads to obstruction followed by compromised intestinal, intestinal blood supply leading to strangulation of herniated contents and all these events happen in a quick succession of so that without proper intervention there will be intestinal ischemia. The strangulated bowel is responsible for the high mortality in patients. Hence a differential of intestinal, internal hernia should always be included in cases of intestinal obstruction with abdominal cocoon other than the TB, the usual cause of cocoon in our part of the world. So even with prompt management, the mortality rate stands between 20% to 75% indicating the high fertility rate of the internal hernia. The surgical intervention usually includes a laparotomy with a reduction of contents and defect closure. When the bowel is incarcerated too tightly to reduce, the defect can be widened and the hernia can be reduced. If the bowel is gangrenous, then resection of the segment is done. However, it should be ensured that the rest of the mesentery should be explored to rule out any other defect sites. Also, any areas of potential herniation should be closed to prevent recurrence. So, what we have learned from this case is that we must keep in mind, even with the latest imaging modalities, the diagnosis of internal hernia is quite challenging and there should be a high degree of clinical suspicion for the same. In abdominal cocoon, without any history suggestive of tuberculosis or previous surgery or any other condition that leads to an intra-abdominal reaction, an internal hernia should be kept as a differential diagnosis. The delaying diagnosis and surgical intervention is associated with potential disastrous complications like gangrene of the bowel and even death. So an early diagnosis and prompt management may prevent a bowel ischemia and can yield a good prognosis of these patients.